Hello, and welcome to the Nick Girls. This is episode 304. <laughs> 300. You surprised me. <laughs> I couldn't remember what, I don't know. It's been like two weeks since we've done this. Yes. So um, We were out of town traveling to all the you places. You have to introduce yourself. In t- oh, I'm Laura, also known as Lala. I'm Leslie, also known as You Don't Call Me Less. It is June 20th, 2016. Go. All right, so I was in 10 different states in eight days. 10 different states and dc is not even in a state if it was a state i would have been in 11 you were in 10 states and a district i know it sounds like um colbert used to do that now you're <laughs> yes. district uh life but we've been doing lots of traveling and lots of knitting so we have a good bit to talk about mm-hmm. would you like to go first with uh, works in progress or do, would you like me to um why don't you go first well, I just have one work in progress right now because I am fixated on it. It is the I Heart Rainbow Sweater by Tin Can Knits. This is my Camp Loopy project for June. I ordered the yarn back in May. I have a friend who's having a wee baby in October, and I am she's very knit worthy, and I'm knitting her quite a few things. Um, so this is a Tin Can Knits pattern it was in their nine months of knitting book Mm -hmm. i believe um the one with all the baby stuff so i am using loopy use in-house yarn which is the loopy U solid series it's interesting um it is a superwash merino wool but it doesn't it's got almost um trying to think of like a chalky texture to it yeah and it is very splitty um, it w- I haven't run into splitty, but I'm not really using okay. super sharp needles. Um, so not a super tight twist. Not a loose twist, though, either. This is the charcoal colorway. This is the second skein. I am almost through. I was trying to get through the body of the sweater today. So I'm almost through the first skein. It is 220 yards. The amount that you... So Camp Loopy, if you're not familiar is an event, a virtual event that's put on by the Loopy U and it's three months and if you knit three months worth of projects, so three projects, one each month using their yarn and meeting the requirements Mm -hmm. then you get a free skein of yarn and I wasn't going to do it this year then I got sucked in I distinctly remember you telling me again so you're interested in knowing that you weren't going to do it but anyway, sorry, go ahead no, you're fine. Um, so I got sucked in because I have all these baby knits that I really want to do mm-hmm. that I didn't have. I didn't have the yarn for this. So the gray is the loopy solids, and then they sell these paint box kits, which are they sell two different like mini skein kits. Mm-hmm. So I got the summer loopy's paint box summers, and the pattern calls for six different colors, and these come with two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine at 50 yards each and the pattern actually says that you need 40 yards of each color you do not you can see by my leftovers Mm -hmm. you do not need 40 yards of each color um you need around probably 20 yards of each of the non non red colors and of course you could do your hearts in any color but um contrast colors two through six you need like 20 yards and then the red you need around 50 yards I did have to go down a needle size, so I'm knitting this on size one and a half needles, 2.5 millimeter, because I'm crazy. Because this is a baby sweater, in the zero to three month size, with over 40 ends so far, out of fingering weight yarn, with Fair Isle, (laughs) Um, to do in a month. And this is three days worth of progress. So not too bad. They do have you. There's two really clever things about this sweater. I'm trying to not. I've got tons of needles. So there is um, this little placket at the top. And you do that. So you're knitting back and forth. And then when you get to the end of the last row, which is this buttonhole row, you put the last four stitches on a holder. And you hold them in front of the first four stitches and just knit two together like a um, yeah yeah so almost like a three needle bind off yeah, that's but without the bind off yeah and that forms that little placket so clever 
So I bought little red heart buttons for it today and from Joann's. And um, then the second clever thing is they have you go up a needle size for the fair isle. So that's actually done on a 2.5, which is what, three millimeter, something like that. And then you go back down for the rest of it. I was kind of hoping that the whole thing was rated on a three millimeter from that point on, but it is not. Um, so I'm doing, there's a ton of sizes in this. I think it goes all the way up to adult actually, because their patterns are sized very reasonably. Um, there's a newborn size that's smaller than this. And then I did the zero to three month size. My friend's baby is going to be born in October, hopefully. And um, I think that'll get the best wear. Yeah. Best thing for my buck. So I'm knitting this and then I'm gonna cast on when this is done a flax light also by um, the Tin Can Knits people. And those will be the two fingering weight sweaters that I knit. And then I have like six heavier than fingering weight sweaters that I would like to knit, but I'm not doing a blanket. For the baby? Yes. Wow. I like this person, you. I know. I'm if glad. You would if you would suck up and have a baby, I'd knit tons of stuff for you, this too. This store is closed, my friend. <laughs> so that is the only... I mean, I'm obsessed with this. I've been re-watching Great British Bake Off. Um, I can't remember if it's the baking show or Bake Off, but whatever. I've been watching that program in anticipation of um, the new one. Mm -hmm. The new season starts in July. So, and apparently if you donate $60 or more to PBS, then you get access to all their, like all the last two seasons oh, that were cool. broadcast in the U.S. So I'm debating that. Um, I think the first one is the one that's on Netflix, but also there's a ton of bootleg ones on YouTube. <laughs> so... <laughs> I've been enjoying that as well. I ain't one to <laughs> gossip, so you didn't hear it from me. <laughs> oh my goodness. Dollar so for you if you can get that quote. Don't say it. Oh, for who? For whoever for me? guesses it. Oh, okay. Do you know a where dollar? it's from? No. Oh. Not even a little. Are you offering a dollar or a pattern? Because I feel like a pattern would be a better offer. A free pattern to the first person who posts the In the episode thread? In the episode there you go. thread. Um, You're anyway. so ridiculous. <laughs> that, that reminds me of, I was telling Wheezy about us being on the farm, and I was like, Leslie is the smartest person I know. Because she convinced the kids that she would pay them a dollar if they caught a chicken, and it caught them, it kept them busy for like three hours. Yep. It was amazing. They did not harm the chicken. They no. were very, they had to gently the catch chickens the chickens. were much smarter than they were, so. <laughs> they, they are related to dinosaurs, so. <laughs> That's it for me, my friend. It's your turn. Um, Okay. I'm snipping ends from my finished object. I'm at 56 so far. Ooh, um, you win the ends battle. Oh, I've been weaving in ends as I go. So I've gotten, I weave in five a day. So I have 10 ends done. Sweet. Um, okay, so works in progress. I only have a few. Um, one is impossible to tell that I've worked on it at all. No, I think it totally it looks bigger than the last time I saw it for sure. So this is Nuvum. All the details are in the show notes. I've got about, I want to say three inches done while we were out of town. This was mostly what I worked on um, in Indiana because it's simple. I didn't have to think. Uh, very easy. Um, I'm working it's a fingering, I'm using a fingering weight. The pattern calls for lace weight. All the details and everything are in the show notes. I'm not going to go over it again because I've talked about it to death. Uh, let's see. What else? I've got um, some socks. Ooh. I don't know that I brought them down here. Um, maybe I put it in here. Nope. Okay, well, I have some socks. You'll just have to trust me on that. I'll show them next <laughs> week. Uh, the vanilla is a new black. I turned the heel on the first one. And this is out of Dobby is a Free Elf. I think maybe they're, they're still in my purse. I can't remember. It's where my socks are. I cast on a new pair of socks, but they're only like at duck pin bowling. They're like that long. <laughs> so. 
Um, okay, so the last thing is something new I cast on, and it's sort of inspired by our friend Lynn, who's been working on one oh. of these. Um, it is the Fractal Danger. Yeah, that's a great pattern. It's another Martina Ben pattern. This one calls for, I think, just a skein of fingering. How many um, yards? Yeah, 400 meters of a fingering weight yarn. It calls for a three and a half millimeter needle. I'm actually using a 3.75 millimeter needle. I always go up one size as a default. Um, Look at that. So I am using, this is something I bought um, just before we went out of town because our friend Sadie um, dyes yarn. Her oh, yeah, she does. Her company is called Knitter's Nightmare. And she's got an awesome podcast and also a floss tube yes. if you're into the cross stitch. Um, so this is her Spectre base, which is her sparkle base in the Enchante colorway. And it's a, excuse me, it's a variegate. And this is what it looks like in the skein. Ooh, that's it, really pretty. It's, um, it's a speckle with sparkle. Mm. Um, it just, it called to me when she posted the update. I was like, yeah, I need to possess that. So, um, luckily I was able to snag a skein. It needs to stay there. And she has some new colorways coming out too. Yeah, she's. She keeps posting them on Instagram. Yeah, I've been looking to them too. <laughs> So this is where I am. I started on it on Saturday, I think. I've been watching, rewatching Big Bang Theory and just sort of, I wanted something simple. So it changes sort of direction three times and I finished the first direction. And then you can see here, I'm starting to change direction again. a different again. way. Yeah. That's super fun. Um, yeah, so it's very easy once you've done um, the sections are easily repeated. Once you've done work through a section once, it's easy to memorize and you don't have to Ooh. look at it again. And it's done in such a way, like, I have to do short rows back and forth, but I don't have to count or anything because I just keep going until I get to the end. And then I change a little bit and then I'll keep going until I, you know, do it again. So it's very simple. Um, That's awesome. And it gives me a lot of yardage for my time I think <laughs> you are all about the stash dash I'm trying you? I mean I still I may lose steam but I'm trying you're doing well so this has 436 yards in it I probably won't use it all and this one I don't know how well it lends itself to just keeping on going like the hitchhiker and those other ones do yeah I'll have to just wait and see as I get towards the end um, how well it lends itself to just continuing that would be great for a skin of hand spun I think it would yeah. That might become... I do have quite a few skeins of hands. You do. Them. You have far more than I do. Well. Um, that's all that I'm working on uh, yeah. knitting-wise. I do have some FOs, but I would like you to go first if you don't mind, because i got to finish oh. cutting ends. Yeah, that's fine, because I finished cutting my ends. I finished two items while we were out of town. So the first thing that I finished was my socks from Very Colorful Yarnings. I am killing socks for Stash Dash. <laughs> like, this is my third pair of finished socks, and I'm gonna I'm trying to finish a pair a week. So I really love this base. This is a base um, that she asked me to test. It's a super washed Targi nylon base. It's really squishy. Um, it's a little bit thicker than most fingering weights, and I've already, I never show you guys socks that I've already worn, but I totally worn these and washed them, and you can't even tell, like, no color bleed, my cat would like to come in, sad for him, um, no color bleed, really soft and squishy, really enjoyable, and I have a good bit left over, so I am going to knit a baby hat using the same yarn for my friend, because she's a Harry Potter geek as well. So that is, um, they were knit on size zeros, fish lips kiss heel, which is not my typical heel, but it's easy to memorize and it's on my phone. I have the pattern saved to my phone. So mm -hmm. when I'm in an airport, this was all airport knitting basically, um, for the most part, the second sock, I thought I was going to need socks for duck pin bowling, which you don't, they let us wear our own in hat. Like as long as you didn't have heels on, they let you wear whatever shoes you had on. So I was like scrambling to finish these in time and I did and then I didn't need them. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. Um 
I love her yarn. In fact, when I placed my second Camp Loopy order, I ordered more of her yarn. But I think the next pair of socks, like, I'm going to finish some socks that are already on my needles. Like my Rose City Rollers and some other stuff. But she sent me some Sport last year in the Slytherin colorways. And I got to get that Gryffindor colorway gone. So it's kind of fun, though, because when I first joined House Cup, I was totally Gryffindor for like five years and now I've been Slytherin for a couple of years so I've got both of those. That's cool. So I have some Slytherin sport weight I believe. Is it sport or DK? If it's DK I can, yeah it's sport. So I can probably knit these on like size one needles. So exciting! <laughs> so that's also exciting and this is in the Slytherin colorway. What I finished was in the, uh, I think it's just HP colorway. It looks like Gryffindor and it's really cool. Nice wide stripes. Um, Next finished object, I finished my shawl by Hohi Locatelli. It is in the Sight is Life ebook. It is golden sand and it looks like this. It is around, um, so I thought it was an attached edging, totally not an attached edging, which is actually perfect. It is huge. Look, I can still. Wow. So it is, I've got it wrapped and it's at least six foot, like after, because it goes my total wingspan after being wrapped. So it is perfect and long and I am going to keep it for me. I started liking the colorway a lot better the farther I got down. So that's fun. Um, I like the a the lace, the ace. I like the lace a lot. It was very intuitive and I could do it while sitting around and talking to people. Mm -hmm. The yarn is Numa Numa. It is a special colorway on the half shell color, or uh, the special base, which is 700 yards on the half shell is the colorway. It was a little bit more variegated than I would typically choose for a lace shell, but it is big geometric lace, so I yeah. think it works well. Um, so new shawl for me. And it matches my shirt, and it's perfect. So I purple. love purple. I cannot lie. Um, so that was knit on size five needles. I did go down a needle size because I'm a loose knitter. And this is stash that is at least probably eight years old. Done. Boom. So on stash dash progress, I am at 3,361.74 meters. That's pretty impressive. I'm not taking pictures of ever. Usually I take pictures every year of everything. I'm just listing it kind of bullet, not even bullet journal style. I'm just listing it in my, oh. my drip. So it works out well. Um, I do need to take pictures though for Ravelry. That is it for me. Those are the two things that I finished, but you finished stuff. I did, but I have and a question for you. Uh-huh. Does do your headphones have a microphone on the little thing? Because I think that's the problem. Is that because when you're messing no. with your shirt? I mean, it changes the volume. It's got something on it, dude. Yeah, it changes the volume. Ooh, it just opened iTunes. We'll have to do some testing offline because every time you do that, they're static. So I'm oh. pretty sure there's a microphone built in there. Okay. But we can test that later. Um, okay. So yes, I did finish. Um, I finished one thing and then I had another thing finished for me. So I finished the Inara wrap. I actually finished it before we went out of town. Um, but I didn't block it until we got back because it, it was late when I finished it. So it's huge. It's, um, 1300 yards, wow. uh, 13 something yards. It's, um, 1250 meters. Um, so you did that and the other shawl, which probably puts you in like... Celadon the, is seven, yeah. uh, around 750 meters. So it's about 2,000 meters right now. Um, God, if I finish this new one, that'll be like 2,000 right there, but we'll see. And I have a couple of sweaters. We'll have one that just needs sleeves. Um, okay, so this is Inara. And it starts at the dark and it goes lighter and lighter and back to the teal um that's really pretty dude the this is not the kit that was um the pattern calls for it calls for a uh 
Sunshine Yarns, I think, pack. Mm -hmm. And this is something else that I found online uh, because Sunshine Yarns was out of stock and I needed it, like, right that second. You did knit it really quickly, though. Like, once you got the yarn. Yeah. You but basically it also it. had 20 yards less per color, which, of course, I didn't even notice. And which was okay for the most part, although on some colors I literally had like four inches left when I was done, but on this blue I ran out when I still had six rows to go. So oh. I just did a bind off. Um, the lace isn't complete, there's supposed to be one more row, but I figure it's it still follows the pattern, so whatever, it's fine. And you have a lot, like that is going to be super wrapped around you. Yeah, well I'm not gonna keep it. It'll either be a prize or I'll give it as a gift. It's just, it's too big for me to practically wear, but it goes up to like boob height folded in half. So it's like eight feet long. Um, it might, I might use it as an SSK door prize. Because, for the Scarab Bennett raffle? Yeah, because it's pretty, it, the colors are neutral enough that it's not too like shocking you know some people don't like certain bright colors and stuff it's more neutral yeah mm -hmm. so I, I think it would be a good prize and I might do that um, I do need to get some decent pictures of it first but aside from that um, Inara is done yay and I really enjoyed knitting it um, I probably will actually wait and splurge for the sunshine yarns next time I haven't knit with their yarn before so so the other thing which I'm going to do a token whine and complain that I don't get to count this yardage for Stash Dash. <laughs> but you didn't knit I it I didn't either. knit it. But you it just is, purchased the yarn. <laughs> it is a knit garment that was completed for me, and I'm the one that wears it, and <laughs> nobody else uses the Stash Dash yardage. Why can't I? Mm. But no. Um, I didn't knit any of this. I did knit part of a swatch. Well, I knit a swatch, but... So, um, I have a friend who... Uh, I provide sweater lots for her, and then I send her a sweater lot for me, and then she knits me a sweater in exchange for a sweater lot for herself. Leslie loves to barter. Ooh, I love barming stuff out, man. <laughs> um, so she knit me. This is out of Leading Men Fiber Arts Copper Cloud. This was a special order that I did last year at SSK. It's showing up slightly darker than it is. It's more of a glowy color, um, sort of like a cinnamon honey color and it's beautiful and I couldn't decide what to make with it and she kept telling me I needed to make a breezy cardigan which is a Hannah Fettig pattern and finally I just said that she could do it for me instead <laughs> I wasn't that blunt we have a very equitable arrangement and um, so I just got it we met up and had lunch and then she came over after lunch and we went through a bunch of my stash and found some more sweater lots and yeah, so she's she's got a lot more stuff she's gonna do. Plus, that's now nice sweater lots that you don't have to move. I know, which is right? Super exciting. So that looks fabulous on you. This is breezy, and it's just a, a big open. It's got these rectangular panels, but they just sort of hang in the front. Um, it fits really well. She did a great job with that. It it lands sort of high butt. Right there. Yeah, and. Um, it, it's great. I love it. The yarn, um, you really get a lot of yarn for your dollar. It's a, a soliloquy base, which is like 650 yards. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's BFL. It's a BFL, I yeah. think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it is BFL. Look at that. <laughs> I pulled this out to knit a shawl with. I actually was thinking about knitting. Um, I bought this and then one of his uh, mini skein sets to knit maybe something like Anara out of. That would be pretty. So. Yeah. If you got one more color, one more skein of that color, mm -hmm. you could make a uh, breathless. That Vera Valamaki that's offset that we kept seeing at Maryland. Yeah, I bought, I totally already bought yarn for that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I bought three skeins of Volma okay. for that. Whatever makes you happy, babe. Um, In gray. Because of I'm course. not a creature of habit. And I think I'm going to pair it with some purple. So um, there's that. So this is lovely. I wore it at work today. Um, I'm only taking it off now because I'm warm. Um, I'm always warm when I'm down here because the lights 
it get hot even though it doesn't look like I have a lot of light trust me it's a basement <laughs> I need every bit I can get uh, so that's done as well I would say that was um, I'm not certain how many yards I think it was around 1800 I would say probably around 1800 um, yards so Gwen's winning stash dash I know right <laughs> if she just knits like two more sweaters for me she'll have blown the lid off of it um, is she knitting another sweater for you right away, or is she knitting? Well, she's sweater? knitting uh, right now. She's knitting another breezy but in worsted weight for her husband's cousin. Oh, cool! But then she's she's about to knit a boxy for me. Ooh, which is the another, fingering weight boxy. Like yes, that's a good one. So your sweater wardrobe is going to be amazing because you have two. Right before I move to Mississippi, <laughs> you'll still be able to wear sweaters. Yeah. It's only 95 here today. Only? Is that Only. It? That's it. The people who are in Arizona right now are like cussing me out because mm -hmm. I think it's 105 there today. Yeah. Although, you know, I, to beat a dead horse, the heat is different. Um, it is, Humid heat is different than dry heat. Yeah, you feel like you're walking through a swimming pool and uh, a heated swimming pool. <laughs> Um, I'd, be, I'd be fine with it. Cool. Um, so I have not spun, but oh, you have spun. I did, yes. Um, I spun last night while we were um, watching Game of Thrones, which Did you finally bar. get it to go? Uh, Michael and I, we haven't subscribed to cable in a long time. Um, just because with Netflix streaming and Amazon and all that, we just, we don't need it. We don't watch a ton of TV. Um, and when we do, we tend to like binge watch a particular show. Mm -hmm. And so we haven't subscribed to cable for a long time. And HBO finally, a couple, a year ago, maybe a little bit longer, added a channel to the Roku um, box, which is how we um, get to Netflix and all that, for HBO. And it's like 15 bucks a month. It just automatically comes out of the same account that uh, my Roku uh, stuff came out of. And the way it's worked all season because this is the first time we're watching game of thrones as it airs yeah uh the way that it you works caught up with all the backlog right. mm -hmm. yeah the way that it works is that at nine o'clock eastern on sunday night when the game of thrones episode begins airing on hbo like regular hbo on cable it becomes available on hbo now at the same time immediately Mm -hmm. That's unusual because usually they do a day delay. Right. But I guess that was, you know, that's one of the perks of having the $15 because if you're willing to wait a day, then you're going to just get it free off a torrent and do it illegally. Like this is the only way they can reasonably expect to make money is if they do it at the same time um, and, and be able to get it live. Anyway, the whole season has worked really well. No problems. But last night, it didn't. Um, and it was it only took like 30 minutes to resolve, but you would have thought that the, <laughs> the sky was falling. <laughs> we went out and we were looking at like the HBO Now Twitter feed. Oh no. And <laughs> people were, you know, some people were just being stupid, but there were some that were really funny. Like there's the, there's a, a priestess in Game of Thrones who's, motto for her god is um the night is dark and full of terrors like that's you know the that's her slogan a motto or or a, a words to live by or whatever and somebody had created a gift that's like my screen is dark and full of errors <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was funny there were a lot of really funny gifts last night but um anyway while we we're waiting for that to get fixed we i'm looking for the other oh there it is I was spinning, and I finished up uh, two ounces of, um, this is, so Moonshine Fiber Company uh, is no longer in business. Um, it was two ladies, and one of the ladies um, is no longer in the fiber industry, but the other is Becca, and she does um, wool pierogi. Yeah. So uh, this is something I've just had in my stash for a long time, and I really have coveted and loved, and it was something that was in my bin for this year mm -hmm. just oh yeah so you are doing a bin of 12 different 12, braids yes. or bumps mm -hmm. um which is about three pounds which isn't much compared to jess and lynn and laura but 
Um, I don't have a bin, by the way. Oh, well, this year you didn't. But Justin and Lynn both did, like, 10-pound bins or because something. Because I find the bin not an encouraging fat. Like, usually when I do stuff like Stash Dash and that, that encourages me to, like, actually use up that product. It doesn't um, restrict you the way that Ben does. Ben, yeah, Ben has no, like, I'll spin three things out of it, and then I'm like, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> There's new fiber coming in. So, um, Ben that we're talking about is a completely twisted and arbitrary group, did a spin the Ben, which basically spin. at the beginning of the year or at the end of one year, working towards the next year, you set aside a certain like amount. December, yeah. Um, in your bin of things that you want to spend for the next year, and if you don't meet you know your own goals you there are consequences you give up some for prizes or stuff like that you um, can or you can choose not to right i didn't sign up anything in the group this was just sort of an internal thing i wanted to get through three pounds of fiber yeah this it's year. like the personal sock club that right. people do mm -hmm. so this was um i loved their packaging it was so cute um, so this was the Moonshine Fiber Company. This was a double shot bat. And the colorways were uh, Twink, Lurky, oh no, I'm sorry. <gasps> Rainbow Bright. It was Bright and Murky Dismal. Yes. Um, so one's rainbow, I bet you, and one's gray. Yes, so this is yes. one, and it was sort of a gray with bits of um, white silk in there. And it's blended really well in other places and not in some places, which adds to the character of um, how it works. So you've got one that's rainbow and one that's gray and you spin them separately and then you ply them together. So I spun a little over two ounces of the gray, that's all there was. And then, sorry about the thing. And so I've got two ounces of this crazy rainbow that I'm going to start spinning. Um, and it's got Angelina in there Ooh, as well. Ooh, so. sparkle. Yeah, so I'll spin this and then I'll apply them together um, using the new Acre Works cape that I got. Oh, I need to send mine off so I can get the new parts or yes. whatever. Well, he said he'd send them to you. Um, or maybe you have to send it to him. I don't know. I have to send it to him. Okay. So I spun two ounces. Hopefully by next week I'll actually have a finished yarn. So... That'll be um, exciting. That'll yeah. get you some stash dash. Yeah, not a lot well. because I don't get to count every ply. You get to count the finished shortage. You yeah. don't get to count the whole. I'm just like luck. giving you a hard time. It's so fun for me. Yeah. And Laura's like, because... I'm freaking over it. Like, <laughs> I've been pummeled already. <laughs> <laughs> That's because you don't go in the stash dash. I don't. Before. But people there are really, really nice. Yeah. So it's not we're like also it's a devious chore. cheaters who want to be able to get our way. <laughs> so we have Including a book to that. review that I'm super excited about mm -hmm. because I am in the mood to knit all the baby stuff. This is Baby Botanicals. Yes, it's a little baby version of five of her most popular um, adult patterns. Well, it's from, um, so it's, she did Botanical Knits mm -hmm. 1 and 2, and it's baby versions of five of those right. patterns. Mm -hmm. So and it's really well priced. It's twelve dollars for the ebook. Yeah. So you get five patterns. It's like five twenty five no, not even. Wait, five patterns for twelve dollars. It's, it's like two twenty five yeah. a pattern. Yeah. It's crazy cheap. So um if you can't already tell, like I've bought all of her books already. Um, Coastal Knits, which was her collaboration with Hannah Fedig. Mm -hmm. Both Botanical Knits I own. Um, Annie and the Swiss Cheese Scarf. So I'm a huge fan of Alana's. And she's got a podcast. I don't know if she still does it or not, but she did an audio, audio mm -hmm. podcast for a long time. And she's got a shop now in California, which is super cool. And I've ordered stuff from their online site before. So this is Five Patterns. It is Early Autumn, Tiny Vines, Little Buds, Twiggy, and Baby Branches. And they're sized super well. Oh my goodness, Some, so well. As, as low as three months up to 12 years of age. So Alice and Julia, I have a feeling, are going to get some mm -hmm. of the patterns in here. Early Autumn is the first one. Oh my gosh. The photography is really beautiful. And Very it's such clear. a cute pattern. Mm -hmm. So it's got lace that runs down the sleeves and the front. Mm -hmm. It is a fingering weight sweater. I appreciate the fact that there are close-ups of detail shots. Yeah. She also, also, for every pattern, front. she's got great schematics. Mm -hmm. At several, for, this one's got, 
uh, 10 different measurements for a baby sweater. Arm length, neck length, neck depth, chest um, circumference, waist circumference. I mean, there's all sorts of measurements for this. And nice clear charts. Mm -hmm. And the patterns aren't super excessively long either. They are maybe two to four pages each, which is really nice as well. And like I was saying earlier, tons of pictures from all different angles. Tiny Vines is the second. That one is says from six months baby. to 12 year old. She is. And this one has a really cool detail that mm -hmm. goes down the sleeve, from the shoulder, down the arm. And, and that's, that's the main detail. A reference to Entangled Vines. Um, that's yes. the adult size version of this sweater. Then there's a Little Buds, which has that pocket detail. Mm -hmm. There you go. That you can see. Which is a reference to Buds and Blooms. That's the um, full size one. And it's also got like a shawl collar. Yeah. Almost it's like, like a sailor collar. Yeah, it's top. kind of like a Peter Pan ish yeah. kind of collar. It's really cute. Um, and something Lots different of... for, you know, a sweater. And those details also got, go down the back. And I can tell that because she's got like 15 pictures. No. One, two, three four, five pictures, all from different angles, so it's really easy to see what you're supposed to be knitting. Twiggy. So cute. Yes, I'm really glad she made a baby version of this, because I don't think that the adult sweater of this would look very good on me, but I think the baby sweater is adorable. And it's mm -hmm. um, knit out of a fingering weight wool, and again, sized great from six months to 12 years of age. Um... The pattern is, again, with these schematics. I mean, look at all of those measurements. That's insane. So all the patterns are sports or fingering weight for the most part. The last pattern is a sport. So three sport patterns, two fingering weights. I fell in love with this book and knew that I wanted it when I saw this pattern. Because, oh my gosh, it's a hoodie that's open but it's got and there's the schematic so you can really see what it looks like laying flat but it's got this gorgeous tree detail in the mm -hmm. back yeah the yoke is Absolutely a reverse stockinette stuck. so that that tree really stands out and mm -hmm. then the rest of the body is in stockinette so it's very economically designed and um the charts are you know large and clear she has all of the uh abbreviations and things that she uses on a single page at the very beginning if you buy the paper copy you also get a download code for the digital version yep um all together really well priced beautiful baby knits and she gave us so on her website for her store she also has a gift set that you can purchase mm -hmm. so this bag actually goes and becomes she's got this cool video of how it becomes wrapping for your present and it's got this really sweet tag on it that says something special inside mm -hmm. it's a little wooden tag and then i'm gonna open this kit so y'all can see what's inside oh i'm not gonna be able to retie it as nicely so there's this box with the botanical prints and inside is a tin with stitch markers a wee little leaf tag so you can tag like I think it says knit with love knit with love yep so you can use that to wrap two sets of buttons one that's branches and then one are these little leaves that you can stitch mm -hmm. into with, different like, designs floss yeah into different designs these really cute stitch markers so they're the kind that you can um they're the bulb safety pins. Yeah, so you can pin them on, but they've got these cute little charms. I really want this set. I'm trying to resist because it's amazing. These cute little scissors oh. that are botanical. And then a needle sizer with the leaf on it. So really, really cool set. And you can also buy a lot of this stuff separately on her site. And this comes with the book as well, right? Um, it does not. Okay. The book is my copy. Sorry. <laughs> um, but it is the... So it does come with this gift kit. How about we spring for the digital copy for whoever wins? That's perfect. You're not getting my book. 
<laughs> we Sorry. Can, we can purchase the digital copy for whoever wins the um, the little kit. Yeah, definitely, so that they can enjoy knitting this as well. Yeah. So, hmm, we need to come up with a prompt. So we didn't think this far ahead. I can, um, I've got a whole bunch of prompts saved. Okay. And so. Alana does have a very cute store that you can go check out and see. See, that's not nearly tied as nicely. I'm going to fix it. <laughs> um, she has a really cool store that you can check out. And I bought some poppy buttons off of there a couple weeks ago that I just adore that I need to find the perfect project for. But, um... I also need remedial wrapping skills, I guess. Sorry. You know I've touched your stuff. <laughs> That's a little bit better. Um, but not really. Man, how do people do that so well? Anyway, so we will come up with a prompt, and Leslie will start the thread in the Knit Girls Ravelry group, and you can join us over there to be entered to win this and a digital copy of the book. Yes, and because we have a million stash dash threads, you'll actually have to click on the group to find the thread. Probably. Yeah, you will. <laughs> Every there time I see it, I'm like... <sighs> I have to click into the group to see if, like, because one thread is the only thing mm -hmm. that'll fit at the bottom on the sizing that I have it on, so I have to yeah. click in to see what's going on. Um, okay, we've got a question. It's more for me, but you can answer how many hours you craft per day on average. So this is from Thumperina. She says, hello, ladies. Laura, now that it is dash dash, how many hour on, hours on average do you spend knitting daily while you are on break from school? When the first day of summer hits me and I don't have to teach, I go crazy with knitting and spinning. So when I'm working full time, I typically set aside an hour a night to two hours a night, unless I have a deadline that I have to reach, then it's all crazy pants um, to knit or spin or craft in general. And then Saturdays and Sundays, unless I'm doing something else, I go a little bit crazy and do like eight hour, eight hour crafting. Mm -hmm. um, now that I'm off school, I do around eight hours of crafting a day typically. Um, depending on how naughty Humberto has been that day. Because if he's been naughty, then I have to clean the house. Like, And once I start cleaning, I just can't clean that area. I have to, like, continue cleaning. Oh, I can totally just clean that area. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, probably around eight hours a day. And then I spend one to two hours on, like, SSK or pattern writing or other stuff. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Um, today I left the house for the first time since Friday, <laughs> mainly because I wanted Sonic, but I also wanted to go to Joanne's to buy buttons for this baby sweater because I have a feeling that I'll get it knocked out. I'm also going to go see Alice in Wonderland probably tomorrow, um, except the theaters near me only have it at like a nine o'clock showing now because it's been out two weeks, so uh, it's old, or three weeks, so it's yeah. old. So now I'm just debating about waiting and going to see Finding Dory instead. Because I am all about the kids' movies. <laughs> I heard, summer. I had to listen to someone talk about that for like an hour today. So. What, Finding Dory? Yes. Do they like it? Um, yes, but he also is a 24-year-old man who broke up with his girlfriend so he didn't have to go to a wedding and drives a custom painted lime green Mustang. So... <laughs> But he went to go see Finding Dory? Yes, and he <laughs> loved it. <laughs> that is amazing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> as far as me for crafting, um, I usually don't only get like an hour or two a day, um, depending on what my other obligations are for the day when I get home from work. Um, uh, I don't... I don't have a summer off, but on the weekends, or if I've taken time, like vacation time or whatever, I, I get in more. I would say it's rare that I craft for more than six or seven hours, even on the weekends, um, because I have a hard time putting down the Kindle 
and crafting, so... That's true, too. I do get a lot more reading done in the summer. Yeah. I also flip-flop my schedules, so instead of going to bed at 10 and getting up at 5, I go to bed at 2 or 3 in the morning. <laughs> Just terrible. I'm and the I same get up way. At if like I have a long 10. stretch of time off, then I'm going to be up reading until, like, 2 in the morning. Yes. And then I'll get up at, like, 11. So, um... But yeah, I I don't craft as much as I would like. Uh, but and then like Laura said with SSK stuff, starting in about May, there's I usually have to put in five or six hours a week for SSK stuff. Um, and mine's stash dash in SSK. Right. Yeah. Well, and I don't do anything with stash dash. Laura puts in a lot more time on that than I do on pretty much anything else. So. Um, not as much as I would like crafting time, but um, enough, I think. Uh, and I rarely get to knit during the day. Every great now and then I'll be able to knit during a meeting or something, but it's rare. And I usually don't take a lunch at work so that I don't have to stay uh, nine hours. Like if I, if I go in at nine, I can get off at five if I don't take a lunch, so I usually don't. Uh, and that's it for me. So as far as okay, reading, you totally froze on my end. So I missed the. So if I'm making a weird face, like I'm like, what's going on? Mm -hmm. It's because Leslie froze for a second. Um, what we are reading? <laughs> I'm reading Leslie's show notes, and there's a funny story that has to do with what she's listening to. But I am reading, um, I read all three books in the Spook Squad series by Carrie Author. I got those from my local library. Um, I've also finished Bright Blaze of Magic by Jennifer Estep. The Carrie Author book, I like some of her older stuff better. She's an Australian paranormal author. Um, these were okay, but I like her older stuff a lot better. Um, Bright Blaze of Magic by Jennifer Estep. She writes um, kind of like a paranormal... She writes an adult series that's like a paranormal assassin that's spider related. This is not part of that series. This is a kid series. She has two kid series. One is completely done. And I feel like this was the third and final book of this series. This one is about... Um, so there's this area of the United States that kind of has like monsters and these families have taken it over. So it's this town that's kind of a theme park that has monsters and also these families that sword fight and kill each other all the time. And the main character is this girl whose mother was assassinated by the head of one of the houses and um, she's been surviving on her own and then in the first book by a twist of fate she ends up saving the life of one of the main house like sons. And so she becomes entangled in their household. And there's a lot of character development that occurs in the first two books. And then the third book's, like, straight plot. Like, this is how we are tying up this book. Mm -hmm. So it was okay. Um, not my favorite in the series. I really like the first one. Then I also read Allegiance of Honor, which is um, a Nalini Singh, I think. I have no idea how you say her name. Yeah, I've read several of hers. Um, it is, so, it is one of her Psy series, um, which is probably on its 15th book, maybe. This might be number 15 or 13 or something like that. It's been around for a while. And she's kind of, the first whole section of the series is all romance, and it's got shifters, mm -hmm. and um, people with paranormal powers, and then this book does not have the romance in it. It kind of, so the one storyline has completely ended and it's kind of like a book that's transitioning to this new storyline so it's a book that ties up a lot of character threads like um riley is it riley and mercy have their pup cubs so they have their babies and people you know it ties up a lot of the kids getting older and going off on their own and the babies so and then it also brings in this new conflict that's shifting um, the world. It was okay. It's it's a transition book. So when you transition, especially with series that are like 14 or 15 books long, mm -hmm. I start to lose faith at that point. But I like her writing style. I read a lot of her other stuff, including some of her terrible like romance books from the 90s. 
So I really like her stuff in general. I've also reread a bunch of Nora Roberts and Shelley Lornston, who's G.A. Aiken's other pseudonym, and then listened to a bunch of G.A. Aiken audiobooks. So I've read probably 20 to 30 books in the last two weeks, yeah. but it's been like junk reading for yeah. them. I mean, a lot of romance type stuff. So not terrible, but nothing that's been super amazing as well. And I'm waiting for the new installment of um, the Innkeeper series by Alana Andrews was supposed to come out today. Just so I'm savoring that. Several rows past where I was supposed to go. Uh-oh. Sorry. Um, sorry for any background noise. My son has two friends over and um, they did not stay gone as long as I asked them to. But <laughs> um, arguing isn't going to do anything right now. So I am listening to The Lightning Struck Heart. Um, you might remember we talked about this a few weeks ago. This is a book by T.J. Clune. And The Lightning Struck Heart is fantasy, and it's very contemporary um, fantasy with uh, Wizard's Apprentice, who's gay, and his best friend is a gay unicorn who's lost his horn, and their other best friend is um, a half-giant, and the Wizard's Apprentice has a crush on the knight who he calls Knight Delicious Face. <laughs> it's very funny. It is, and the... I, I downloaded a sample to listen to of the audiobook first because new narrators can really kill a book for me. Yeah. Um, there are certain inflections and things that I just cannot stand when I'm listening to an audiobook. And this guy is hilarious. We, When we first started the podcast, we talked about um, this YouTube thing called Sassy Gay sassy Friend. Sassy Gay Friend! I love Sassy Gay Friend. And he was the old like, Sassy Gay yeah, Friend. Yeah, very self-deprecating and funny and sort and he of did Shakespeare, dry humor. And he did Shakespeare, which was amazing. And this book is very similar. It's hilarious, but definitely not for kids. No. Um, <laughs> but it's a very funny audiobook that I'm enjoying listening to. Um, I've been rereading the... Uh, Alana Andrews Kate Daniels series. A good one. I'm on the I just finished the fourth one where she battled her aunt and I'm about to start the fifth one where she starts her own agency. Um, I think the last time I read up to the eighth one and I think they've got one more where they sort of finished off the Have you read all the short stories? Like the gym? Mm -mm. Oh, you need to read the gym short stories. Oh They're good. The gym and Dolly. I just haven't gone back. Um, and done that yet. But yeah, I was doing that. And then Kobe is listening to Dawn of Wonder, which I just finished um, a few weeks ago. He wanted a new audiobook. So, and he's enjoying that as far as I know. Cool. So, we obviously have Stash Dash going on. If you need any details about Stash Dash, they are in um, the chatter thread and also on a page that we created in our Ravelry group. So that all all that information is there. Anyone is welcome to join and you are welcome to jump in at any time from now until when it ends in August. Mm -hmm. um, we have a sale cal going on with some really cool fiber, some luster long wool fiber. And that is going on from now until when Stash Dash ends. Right, which is mid-August. Um, we went to TNNA, which was lots of fun. TNNA is, it is for the industry folk in the knitting industry. So it's really a different vibe than like a Maryland Sheep and Wool or a Stitches. It is people who might not be knitters, who do the business aspect of knitting. So they run the yarn companies, um, sometimes they dye. Sometimes there's salespeople who work for some of the big name companies. Um, it's designers, it's authors, it's people who design accessories for mm -hmm. knitting. Um, like the Gleaner people were there. So it's a really interesting mix of it's uh, publishing companies. Like Story was there and yeah. F and W. Um, I'm sure some that I'm there's forgetting. like product designers, like Shocked was there. Yes, we got to play, and I got to talk to Barry Shocked, like, check that off the lifetime list of things, while Leslie talked to Jane Patrick. Yeah. 
It was, and we saw Liz Gibson and Jill Draper and Laura Nelkin, and we saw lots of cool people that we mm-hmm. always enjoy. I got to talk to Tannis um, for a little bit, so lots and lots of fun people. Yeah, and, and we we generally go to sort of stay on top of um, cool new products, new yarn lines, scope out teachers for future events. Um, you know, make connections with people who can help us get cool stuff to you guys. So, um, we talked to a lot of people. We, we made some connections that, you know, maybe we have a couple of new names for SSK in the future. Um, both vending and teachers. Um, so it was a successful, we only spent one full day there, um, at TNNA. We did go on Friday night, um, and did a little bit of mingling and hit sample it. And Sample is the only time that you can actually buy stuff and carry it away with right. you at CNNA. The rest is like wholesale ordering. Mm-hmm. And the wholesale ordering people are not interested in us. No. And I don't blame them. <laughs> because, yeah, we don't run yarn yeah. shops. They want the yarn shops that are going to open wholesale counts and meet that minimum requirement. Yeah. So it was lots of fun. It was... Um, we got to spend a lot of time with Ross Farms, which was great. We love Amy and Scooter Pie. Um, we got to spend some time with my sister's local yarn shop owner. Mm-hmm. So that was lots Lisa. of fun. Yep, Lisa from, oh, what's her shop? Hidden River. There we go. Um, so that was lots of fun. We got to eat lots of good food. We went to one yarn shop in the area, which was... No, I can't remember it. Loop. Something loop. I yeah. Think. Like on the loop. Yeah, Loops. it was off of DuPont Circle. I can't remember what the name of the shop was now. It was but. really cute. You walked up some stairs mm-hmm. and it was there. They had a great selection of some indies that we had never seen before. Mm-hmm. As well as like Wandering Wool and a bunch of people that we were already familiar yeah. with. Knitted Wit. So lots of cool things there. Um, And then that Sunday we flew to Indiana Mm -hmm. and we got to spend time with Joanna Spring on her farm and snuggle all the lambs and goats and watch the kids chase chickens and hang out with her pup and her and she is her and her husband are so cool and they're doing such a cool thing with that farm. Yeah. So it was lots and lots of fun and Amy Beth and her daughter came down one day and we went duck pin bowling which I had never heard of before but was lots of fun with Malia mm-hmm. um, rhymes with Maria on Ravelry and it was just lots and lots of like chill time but fun you made bread I did I made bread with Joanna's husband Bill who was very kind and walked me through the process. They even like grind their own wheat berries to make their own flour. Um, They're hardcore. Uh, But yeah, we ate a lot of really great food um, from the farm and um, got to spend a lot of time just sitting around and talking and taking lots of breaks to read or, you know, eat or play games. We played a lot of board games with Kobe. We did. Um, it was nice. It was a a nice sort of break from the usual. So we flew back on Thursday night. I get I got in Friday morning. (laughs) Yeah. Even though my flight was delayed over three hours, um, I still beat Laura home by about half an hour. (laughs) And you had to drive too. I had an an hour hour drive after I got to the airport. Yeah. Whereas my drive to the airport, the Memphis airport's like 20 minutes at most. Like at night at 1 a.m. it's like 15 minutes. Yeah. I also had a 13 year old who was very determined to keep me awake because he didn't want me to fall asleep driving. And I was like, honey, I'm not even remotely tired at this point. So, but yeah. Um, And then I pretty much did nothing for two days. Um, But yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. We, we had a really good week. Um, It was nice to have a week off from podcasting. I feel like we, I've got a little bit more to show this week because of that, which is nice. Um, and Michael got four days all by himself. So did he have an enjoyable time by himself? Uh, no, most of the each day I got a text from him that was like, "Yep, still bored." <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
for Michael. But you'll be in Boston next month. I will. I'll be in Boston July 9th for the 11th. I'll be at the ILA convention, which is the International Literacy Association, where I get to meet tons of cool authors and cool people. If you are going, please, I know at least one of our viewers is going, and she's on, like, the board for it because she's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, it's a great organization. And I'm super excited because some of my favorite authors are going to be speaking and I love to walk around and get books signed and actually go and do continuing education and stuff like that too. Yeah. So I'll be in Boston at their convention center um, the 9th through the 11th. If you know any yarn shops that I should definitely hit in that area, people of the internet, you should definitely let me know. I'm going to try to go visit our friend Gwen at the art museum one day. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be tons of fun. So I'm there. I actually get in like a Friday night and I leave a Monday, like early afternoon, I feel like. Hmm. Um, so that will be fun. Um, and then we have, oh, we have a big announcement. I yes. totally didn't see that down there. But before we get to that, I just want to thank all of our Patreon supporters. Um, you helping to support us allows us to go places like TNNA to recruit new um, teachers and to get new dyers to share things with us on the show and to get um, new equipment to review and report back to you guys on and um, also to do mundane things like pay for postage mailing out prizes or you know pay for a new piece of equipment we might need for one of our computers to record or, or things like that so Every little bit helps. We genuinely appreciate those of you who support us, no matter what the dollar amount. And that's um, a, that allows us to do live podcasts too, because yes. we had to purchase a few things for mm -hmm. that. Yeah, the software. And we did do a live podcast together. Yes, on Thursday uh, before we left. Two Thursdays ago, I think, yeah. which I was need lots to, of fun. Um, the, it should be on the Knit Girls um, YouTube account, but I need to go out and I'll add it as an entry on our website as well because some people just subscribe to the website and so as soon as a new post gotcha. goes up they get notified um and it also would have to send it to podcast garden as well so that the people who subscribe through itunes get it so it's just we didn't have time before we left so yep we were super busy um so thank you patreon folks mm -hmm. and we will do our patreon monthly drawing probably next week let's see it's always let's the last weekend of the month yeah it'll be next week I should get spinning then. <laughs> I can always yeah, spin for it if you want. No, I'm fine. Whatever There's works. a lot of fiber here. Plus, Into the World is having a sale mm -hmm. for the month of June to help expand their studio. Um, and they are offering, what was it, 20%, like 20 15, I think. 20%. And that includes their fiber club. Yeah, which is a great deal. Usually, That's an amazing yeah, deal. Those things don't usually go on sale. So so I'm thinking about rejoining their fiber club. <laughs> so terrible. Um, but I'm giving myself a week till the because the sale goes on for another week. I'm giving my... But like I've only not been in it for two months and I've fallen in love with both colorways that they offered for the last two months. And I'm just like I could have had those but it's the fiber was piling up so it's good to take a break and yeah. I also decreased my southern cross fibers to one so but now I feel like I need to rejoin because Chris and James just do such amazing dying and I convinced Jess to join so there is that <laughs> um so yeah um and Wesley's got out the notebook yeah <laughs> it's just got serious <laughs> so when we initially started Patreon, it was so that we could fund a trip to Portland so that we could check out um, locations for a secondary retreat. This would be, in addition to SSK, not as a replacement, um, no. a separate offshoot retreat because it would have to be much smaller to, to sort of get... It, it'll have a totally different feel than SSK. It will. Because um, Portland and Nashville by themselves have totally different feels. And the venue that we chose is much different than Scarrett Bennett, yes. which is the Kennedy School. Yes, it's McMinimins, which is sort of, I don't know if chain is the right word, but it's like an organization that owns lots of really cool buildings. And um, we toured a bunch of them before we decided on the Kennedy School. Yes, in the area. Um, so the Kennedy School used to be an elementary school. Mm-hmm. And now it is a super fancy hotel slash yes. conference center. 
Um, and we took a video while we were there, kind of yeah. doing a tour. Which we'll have I'm... to, um, we'll probably, I'll put the video together and then Laura and I can do some sort of voiceover to cover the different um, things that we recorded. But yeah, it's it's a school that's been converted. Um, it's got guest rooms, 57 rooms. It's got brewery on site. Um, several different bars on the premises. Uh, it's got restaurants in house. Movie it's got theater. A movie theater in house. It's got a soaking, like a hot soaking pool, which is a thing, I guess. Um, <laughs> Lots of pa <laughs> uh, like patio area. Yes. It's nice out. It's Portland, so the weather can change really quickly. Yeah. Um, um, Lots of benches everywhere yeah. for people to gather on. Like all the rooms really are really cool. cute. Um, they they all have these different themes in them. There's two different uh, room areas. One of them is in the main building, the original building, and then they've added on um, another building with just rooms. So, um, yeah, I'm trying to see if I've missed anything. Brewery, the event space, the movie theater, the soaking pool, and the restaurants. Yeah, so I've covered the, the main thing. So it's it's Kennedy School. It's in Portland. And um, the way that we're going to do this one is it's going to be smaller, first of all. Uh, because SSK is wonderful and great, but it's also a lot to manage. Um and it's not so bad now because we, I mean, this is our fifth year, right? So we've worked out most of the kinks of yep. what we need to do. But, um, and but in any time, sorry, I'm just sort of on a roll. But this one's going to be small. No, it's going to have 40 people total. And that includes Laura, myself, and our two teachers that we're going to bring in. So you want to talk about the teachers since I've been talking? Sure. So... If you haven't guessed already, Leslie and I are a little bit of fangirls of Hohi. Mm -hmm. So she is going to be one of our teachers. And when you think of Hohi, you think of interpretations, collections. And so our other teacher is going to be Vera. Yes. So, so. two designers that I adore to pieces mm -hmm. that are not local to anywhere. They're both They're, overseas right. teachers that we're bringing in. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a special thing. Yes. Um, they do do some teaching in the U.S., but not a ton. Yes. And we're just super excited. Mm -hmm. These are people whose patterns I've been knitting for a really long time and adored both of their styles. Their styles mesh well with us, and we're just super excited. So they're yeah. going to each be teaching some classes, and we are going to post the details of those classes as soon as we're discussing some options right. with them. They the, have four classes that they typically teach. Mm -hmm. And they'll probably each teach um, one or two classes, and then they're brainstorming on the possibility of teaching a class together, which I think would be just wonderful. And um, we're also going to have like a keynote speech where they talk to us about um, their sort of design inspiration and how they decide on what their themes are for each year of interpretations and mm -hmm. um, and the I, new interpretations will have just mm -hmm. come out mm -hmm. so there will be another interpretations collection and it will they are going to try to bring some of the garments from that with them right so um, that's exciting yeah we're really excited we've been talking um with hohi for months and then more recently um, we added Vera in, and because we, originally we were trying to get Hohi in for SSK, but it sort of conflicts with their holiday schedule. So we thought, oh, she'd probably be a really great fit for Portland. So, um, and the two of them together, I'm really looking forward to because mm -hmm. I, I think that they will just be a, a great combination together because they already mesh so well in their designs and their aesthetics. So, um, like we mentioned, this one is going to be much smaller. Um, also, a, a, something different from the way that we handle SSK is um, lodging is completely out of our hands. So there's lodging on site, and we will have a room block, and we will have um, you know a discount price for the rooms that are in our block. But you're not obligated to stay there. If you're local, mm -hmm. that's great. You don't even need a, a room. If you know the rooms are all queen or king size beds, so maybe you're comfortable sharing a bed with someone else, and you can cut the cost of lodging in half. 
lodging is completely out of our or hands. Or if you want to bring your husband with you yeah. and he does Portland stuff while you mm -hmm. do knitting retreat stuff, that could be an option as well. Yeah, it just, it makes a lot more sense to have that be something a la carte where you decide if you want to stay on site or if you want to stay with a friend in Portland or if you're local. Um, so there's all of that. The price is not set in stone yet. It's going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of $500. That's going to include breakfast and lunch for two days and it's going to include um, on the the day before where we have sort of a welcome thing, there will be little, you know, nibbles or d'oeuvres, that sort of thing. Um, it will be dinner on your own, the same way it is for SSK. Uh, class will be included, goodie bag will be included. Um, I'm trying to think of other things, but my brain is not all there at the moment. Um, if you have any questions, please ask and we will answer them. Yeah. The details, I'm sure there's something that you're right. we just forgetting signed about. contracts with both teachers and with the venue. So we wanted to, to tell you guys now, um, we haven't decided if the spots will be lottery style or first come first serve or some combination of the two, um, but we will have all that information worked out shortly. We just wanted to go ahead and get this out there for those of you who are considering Portland as um, an event you want to go to. We actually haven't decided on a name yet either. We're tossing around some ideas there. We keep trying to think of like, so SSK is such a... Cool. We love we love that it's an acronym, right? Sorry, I didn't mean to. No, you're fine. But with Portland, it's a little bit harder. So if you have any ideas, let us know. Yeah. Um, yeah, we want to continue the... I want, for sure want to continue that um, knitting abbreviation sort of theme. But if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Right. I mean, I'm not going to, like, cancel the event if we can't think of something, <laughs> but... Um, I think it would be cool if we can continue on. So if you have any good ideas for that, that'd be awesome. Let us know. But um, more details to come on that. We'll announce it on the podcast as we do pretty much everything. So, But if you have any specific questions we can answer now, feel free to ask them in the episode thread. Um, Hohe and Vera are both looking forward to it, and we're totally stoked that they're coming. Um, excited. I am too. Uh, I think that's all I got, though. Do you have anything else you want to talk about? Um, SSKY's classes are up. The rosters have been posted in the um, SSK group. I'm going to add them to the website probably tomorrow. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a link to a Google document that you cannot edit, but you can see. Mm -hmm. And that way, as I change things, I don't have to keep reposting different sense. things. Yeah. So I think that is a better move um, for this time around. Um, on the same SSK front, uh, if you haven't already filled out your event questionnaire, then you've probably got an email from me in your inbox going, hey, please fill out your event questionnaire, because this week is the deadline for us ordering um, t-shirts and a couple of the other little things that we um, add into the bag. So. If you don't fill out your questionnaire by Wednesday, then we'll just assume that you don't want a t-shirt and that you just want yarn in your bag, no extras or anything like that. We will have a few extra things, um, extras at SSK that you can purchase, um, but we don't order a ton of extra because we don't want to end up with lunch left over. I have a ton of shopping bags <laughs> in my garage that I need to rehome at this SSK, yeah. so... Um, but yeah, I think that's it. Um, if you, I'm going to be adding class costs to the, those who have already completed their event questionnaire and said, yes, I want this extra, that extra. I'll be adding classes into that so that I'll have totals for each person um, at some point this week. And once I have those, I'll email everyone and let them know that they're done. And if anybody wants a PayPal invoice, they can just let me know at that point. If you don't request a PayPal invoice, I'll just assume that you're going to pay it at check-in. That's the way we've done it the past few years, and it's worked yeah. great. So um, I have no problem sending anyone a PayPal invoice if that's what you want. But and it's we a can lot also take work. credit cards at mm -hmm. check-in if we need yeah. to. Yeah, credit as well. cards, checks, cash, whatever. Um, we're good with that. So I think that's about it. Oh God, I hope so. We've been talking for over an hour. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah. I guess that's it, and we will cool. talk to you guys again next weekend. Awesome. Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all.